Okay guys, I'm just going to put this disclaimer here at the beginning. This is not a video I wanted to make. This is not a video I thought I would have to make. Um, hi res, you guys are cooked. You guys are cooked after this one. You know, I've... I've stuck around from the good and the bad. And this is how I am rewarded. I supported you guys even when you didn't deserve it. Even when everyone else was saying that, you know, Paladins is cooked, high res is done, it's over. I was one of the only people supporting you guys and saying, no, no, they have, they'll get it under control, it'll be just fine. I was one of the only people in support of you guys. And this is how you guys treat me. This is a, this is a uh, disclaimer right here. If you guys are offended by... I'm not going to sugarcoat this. If you guys are offended by strong language, this is not the video to me in. Now, the audio clips you're about to hear are pre-recorded, but um, I guess a little bit of backstory here. So, I want to say this whole situation started around a month ago. I got incredibly pissed off one night, had enough and went and recorded some uh, some audio for a video that was going to be its own standalone video, mind you. And, <clears throat> well, shit escalated. Uh, <laughs> I then made a, sorry for the voice crack there, I then made a video, I then made a video on the Feudal Fables patch notes, the current patch that we are in. I made a video on those patch notes because they were pretty ass and the balance is terrible and I'm not joking you guys not even not even four days after that was recorded I got hit with a permanent ban because I told somebody to stop throwing in ranked I got hit with a permanent ban so I'm gonna make a follow-up video to this shortly after this one is finished. But just know, there's no more Paladins content coming to this channel. That Maeve montage, the IO guide, no. I won't even go on my alt account to make more content. It's not gonna happen. I'm sorry. As fun as those videos were to make, it is, uh, it's simply not worth, to, it's not worth the time investment. I had so much time and money invested just for a permanent ban because I told someone to stop throwing in ranked. So to anyone who's watching this, just know, if someone is being toxic to you in ranked, what high res wants, they don't want you to defend yourself, they don't want you to stick up for yourself. Your best bet is to just lay down and take it. That's what they're telling us. They are telling us that if someone is being toxic to lay down and take it. That's what high res wants. So, don't make the same mistake I did by thinking that you can defend yourself and not get in trouble for it. Because you will get in trouble for it. High res has proven time and time again they don't care about their community nor their fan base. And, well, I was an idiot. I still supported them, I still stuck by them. So, I had this coming, but I really just, why? Why like this? Out of all the ways I could have went down, it had to be like this. So, um, yeah, go ahead, Hyros, keep killing your game. You're not going to have a player base if you ban everybody. So, the, um, the first audio clip here, so some context, I guess, for it, is, it's the first clip where I was talking, I, I got fed up, and I was talking about a bunch of the issues with the game. And let's go ahead and roll that. Um, this is going to be a long video, by the way, just throwing that out there. <clears throat> okay, guys, so, um, Season 7 on Paladins, yeah, no. Uh, hi Res, Evil Mojo, we got some shit to discuss. Now I know the audio quality is different than what y'all are used to, uh, it's currently 11 o'clock at night when I'm recording this, I'm in my car right now. Because I can't be, I, I cannot be fucked to go and wake everyone else up in the house to make this video. Not happening. 
So this is kind of an accumulation of shit just building up since season seven came out. It's bad enough that I was gold in one in 99 out of 100 last season and didn't hit fucking platinum because your stupid ass matchmaking is set, is, is set up to push people as close to a 50-50 win rate as possible, okay? I understand if it's casual, that's fine. Casual, it does not matter. There's nothing on the line. But when you are in a competitive environment, that is fucking bullshit, okay? And I know I'm going off the handle here. And I quite frankly do not care. I don't care. You cannot tell me that it is fair that someone like me who busts my ass and can drop 200k healing with just about every healer in the game, who can drop over 150k damage on just about every flank and damage character in the game, and someone who can drop 30 plus kills on most flanks, right? Or can drop 400 objective time on the front lines. You're telling me that even though I busted my ass for gold one, I deserve to lose 16 games in a row because my randoms threw. I learned my lesson from last season. I play mostly in a stack now, and even then, our randoms still fuck us. Our randoms still completely ruin the experience because of the matchmaking. Now then, with this little with that little tangent out of the way, we're coming back to that later, by the way, guys. We're coming back to that later. So, um, I actually have a little notepad here with some stuff I want to talk about. Koga, we're going to talk about balancing real quick. Koga. Koga has been buffed for two patches now. We were not asking for him to be buffed. We were happy with the nerf. We were happy when you nerfed Adrenaline Junk because it made Koga actually require a little bit of skill to use. Right? Koga was not overpowered after you nerfed Adrenaline Junk. He was still powerful. He was still busted. He was not overpowered. Now, Koga is completely broken and requires basically no skill outside of aim. Adrenaline Junkie, you have to you have to get 80 damage with your SMGs now, where it was in the first place, to get your energy back. The only difference now is that it doesn't ramp off of shields, which is good, but it still ramps off deployables. So guess what? The enemy team has Nanara and she puts up a wall. Just beam the wall, free energy. You fill your stamina all the way up, all the way. I've been doing this for the last three days, mind you. Koga did not need the buff. He has piercing damage on his claws now. What's piercing damage for those of you who don't know? Well, uh, it's this neat little thing where you hit somebody and it goes through them and hits the enemies behind them too. This also works on pets and illusions. Ying's illusions and Io's, um, Io's pet. Yeah, goes through them too. So you can rack up a shit ton of damage with doing barely any work. And then when your energy gets low, you switch back to your submachine guns, mag dump Inara's wall, and you're back to full stamina. Who, who in the right mind, who there thought that was a good idea? At, who there at Evil Mojo thought that was a great idea? I want to know. In the same breath, mind you, in the same breath, we're nerfing Sky three patches in a row. We were, the whole community, do you guys remember uh, back um, earlier last year, early last year, people were saying Sky was a throw pick early last year and we're asking for her to get buffed. We wanted her to get buffed. She got buffed. Then people complained, said she was OP, said she was broken, said she ruined the game. Mind you, they were completely ignoring the fact that Fiery Disposition on Betty applied the fire damage on everything she did, were completely ignoring Talus and Koga. Right? We were ignoring them. And this is not to mention when Inara was still overpowered, when Rom was still broken, when Dredge was still broken. We had all these broken champions. Sky finally gets made good, and we complain. She has nerfed three patches in a row. We nerfed the we nerfed debilitate first off, okay. And they said it's because it was the only talent being used. It was her only good talent. That's why. It was her only halfway decent talent. That's why it was the only one being used. Then we have them nerfing the poison damage itself. Not cool. Not cool at all. 
No, not how that should work. Not how that should work at all. Sky has two main ways of dealing damage outside of her ultimate. She has two ways to deal damage to people outside of her ultimate. Her primary fire and her poison. You nerf her poison. That leaves her poison doing just some poke damage with her primary fire doing most of the work. Fine, we can handle that. That's okay. Then you nerf her primary fire. You nerf the damage. You nerf the fall off range. So now, with Illuminate base kit, you have to go inside of detection range to do damage. To max out on your damage potential, you have to get yourself killed pretty much. That is not cool. That's not fair. No. No. A hundred times no. And keep in mind, all the while, Talus has not had a single balance change since I started playing the game. I don't think Talus had one single balance change. He still has two ultimates. He gets a free Tyra ultimate every, what, 12 seconds? Something like that. And if you have your cards right, you can get that back almost instantly. So he gets a free Tyra ultimate. And then he has his ultimate, which might I add how, how bullshit his ultimate is. Where he can just levitate you off the ground, do 600 damage, and then teleport back to his spawn with no risk whatsoever. And any damage he took would just go away because he can regen 1000 HP and his teleport cleanses all status effects. That includes cauterize, meaning the reduced healing. So he still gets a thousand healing back, or he gets a thousand healing for teleporting regardless, right? He does more damage than Sky. He has a faster fire rate than Sky. He has a longer range than Sky. He has more ways of dealing damage than Sky. Talus is overpowered. Talus is broken. Talus makes the game unfun. He, he won't get nerfed. He won't get nerfed, but Sky, when, we, when she's finally usable in ranked, when she's finally not a throw pick, then we start nerfing her. I was excited to get her gold skin. I, I, for those of you who don't know, by the way, I finally got her gold skin. I know I haven't streamed Paladins in a while. I haven't made any videos on it in a while. I finally got her gold skin. It's been a couple weeks now. I was excited to get her gold skin before they did all these nerfs, right? I was excited. I liked playing her. I was getting good with her. Then, nerf, nerf, nerf. Completely killed my motivation to play her. I only played her for the gold skin after that. I still don't play her. I can't. I can't bring myself to do it. I don't have fun. Sky was a fun character to play. She's not fun to play anymore. Um, let's talk about, let's talk about, um, Let's talk about the rank separation real quick. So, Diamond can play with Platinum. Platinum can play with Gold. Gold cannot play with Diamond for some reason. And keep in mind, this, this will be relevant later. You guys are going to understand exactly what I'm saying. And this is the main reason I'm making this. I was going to make this after we did our placements, by the way. So, those, <clears throat> so you guys remember I play CSGO, one of my buddies I play Paladins with. We currently cannot play ranked together because I am in gold four hard stuck because of the fucking matchmaking while he's in diamond, right? We did our placements together, mind you. I ended last split. I ended season seven at silver one. I won, uh, sorry, we won four out of five of our placements. He placed in gold. I placed in silver five. He was gold two. I was silver five. We both won four out of five of our placements. So whatever the hell you guys did with the, with the rank system, you fucked it up even worse. There's no reason that two players of similar skill level should not be able to play with each other. And do you know why I say similar skill level? So uh, Evil Mojo, you're not fucking slick with this, by the way. You're not slick with this at all. I play against Diamonds. I play against Masters. I play against Grandmasters. You guys are not slick with this whatsoever. If I'm good enough to play against them, I'm good enough to play with them. Why are my teammates in bronze and silver in my enemies in platinum and above? Riddle me that one. Riddle me that one, Evil Mojo. Hi, Rez. What is this matchmaking, hmm? You're telling me I cannot play with my friends who are in diamond, who all agree that I should be in diamond with them. 
that's the fucked up part. Is they don't agree I should be in diamond with them. I cannot play with them in ranked. Because of your shitty system. Let's talk about the TP gain loss real quick. Because this also plays a factor into this. So, hi res. I was gaining 14 TP earlier. I lost four games in a row because randoms were throwing. Won a match, lost two more because, again, randoms were throwing. Now I am gaining 9 TP and losing 12 to 13. You should never, under any circumstance, lose more points than you gain. You should never, under any circumstance, have to lose more points than you gain. That is not fair whatsoever. At all. At all. I, and like I said, many people, <clears throat> many people agree with the take that I should be in Diamond. I don't agree with that take. I just want Platinum. I just think I should be up in Plat. But a lot of people agree with the stance that I should be Diamond or higher. Met some guy, uh, you guys you guys probably remember this, uh, Cam. Uh, Cam, he commented on a couple of my videos, right? Yeah, when I met him, it was in a payload match. He thought I was in Grandmaster. I was just dicking around with Vora. And he thought I was in Grandmaster. That says something right there about my skill versus my actual rank. I've carried Grandmasters before. I've had GMs on my team and outperformed them. I've, I've had the screenshots in videos. You guys have seen them. You guys have seen my gameplay. And yet, 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 it's like they have a bone to pick with me. Because I call them on their shit. Because I tell them, this isn't cool. It's almost like they have a grudge against me, which wouldn't surprise me. They are petty. Look what happened with Cyberbolt. When, back when Cyberbolt was making content, look what happened with him. It wouldn't surprise me whatsoever. Okay? And all of this ties in to their horrible matchmaking system. That, once again, tries to force everyone as close to a 50-50 win rate as possible. I know I, I, I know I lost my cool in this one, guys. And I apologize for that. I know that you guys don't like seeing me like this. You don't like seeing me mad like this. And that's understandable. But I need to get this out there. This is pissing me off way too much to not say something. So, I, I guess where I'm going to leave this off is I have no hope of hitting diamond anytime soon. I might hit platinum if I'm lucky. If I'm lucky. If I'm lucky, somebody at high res or evil mojo will see this video. And if someone from the Paladins development team sees this some way, somehow, or a larger content creator sees this some way, somehow, know that this is not a cry to boost my rank to what I think it should be. This is a cry for help, yo. This is a cry to fix the game. How can new players be expected to want to stick around with systems like this, okay? Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I am not a simp for Evil Mojo and high res. I call them on their shit quite frequently. You know, just like Vatu being completely bugged on console ever since they nerfed his dash. He doesn't, he doesn't work properly on console. But, you know, I'm gonna give credit where it's due. Of course, that's a given. But, why? Why the hell am I not allowed to hit Diamond? Or even Platinum for that matter. I was 99 out of 100 on Gold 1. You guys couldn't have waited until after I hit Platinum. I went from Gold 1 to Silver 1. And that shit hurt. That genuinely upset me. Because I had my hopes so high. I had my hopes so high. That I was going to hit Platinum. I was 99 out of 100. I was one TP off. And you fuckers can't be bothered to make the matchmaking fair. It's not based off of your rank. It's not based off of your skill. It's based on fucking you over. So to any new players who are wondering what comp is like, this is the experience of someone who's been playing the game for a year and a half. And again, many, many people agree with the stance that I should be in diamond or above. Many people. I've had Grandmasters smurf so they can play with me. That's the point this is at. That's the point I'm trying to get across. Or across. 
English here. That's the point I'm trying to get across. Is is getting to a point where I'm legitimately not enjoying the game. I am genuinely not having fun in Paladins in 2024. The matchmaking makes me want to die. That's that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. Currently sitting at like 16 out of 100 gold for was 91 out of 100 earlier, mind you. But again, again, high res matchmaking strikes again. And if anyone is curious about how most of my matches go, just look me up on Paladin's Edge. You can look at my match history. Uh, roughly a week ago, I dropped 190k healing on IO, and anyone who plays IO knows that dropping over 180k is a pretty big achievement. Right? Dropping over 160k, even, is what people would consider a decent sized achievement for an IO player. I dropped almost 200,000 healing, and it almost lost. I almost lost that match. Because again, your matchmaking is shit, high res. That's the bottom line. I don't care if this system is in casual. When I play casual, I play casual to have fun. When I'm playing ranked, I'm trying to win. I'm trying to have a fair experience. It is not fair when I am in silver playing against grandmasters. This happened, by the way. I was in silver. I was silver. I think I was silver one, right? This, this split, silver one. I played against a grandmaster and the rest of my team was in bronze. How is that fair? That I'm carrying a team of actual bronzes against a grandmaster. A season six grandmaster, mind you. So recent grandmaster. How is this fair? And if anyone wants screenshots, if anyone wants my match history, again, go on Paladin's Edge. Look at my match history. I, I'm just... For those of you who watch my Twitch channel and are wondering why I have not been streaming Paladins and why I haven't streamed Paladins in almost two months, this is why. This is why. Because it is genuinely a fucking detriment to my mental state. That is why. So, I'm going to leave it off here. If you... If you think I made any valid points here, send this video to someone you know who can spread the message to someone at high res, at evil mojo, hell, whoever. I'm not expecting anything to come of this. I'm not. But I have to get this out there because it's been eating at me for the entire split. Because I just want to play with my friends. But most of my friends are in diamond. And the ones who aren't in diamond are holding themselves back in platinum so they can play with me. I don't like that. I don't like the fact that they have to hold themselves back so that we can so, so we can play together. That's not cool. They shouldn't have to do that. I, I just, I don't know. I don't know. If you think I made some valid points, just send this to someone in high res, evil mojo, whatever. A big YouTuber even would work. Um, again, I'm sorry. This is not the kind of content I like making. I like making the, the fun stuff like that Maeve montage I made. That was fun. I enjoyed making that. The IO guide video, that was fun. I enjoyed making that. The, uh, when I hit platinum on Fortnite for the first time. You know, that kind of content. I like making the entertaining kind of content. I don't like making the rant content 24-7. But it's just, it seems like everything's going downhill right now. And I don't know why. I just, I genuinely do not understand. So, again... You don't have to take my word for it. I'll leave my gamer tag in the description. You can look me up on Paladin's Edge. And I'm just... I'm, I, I don't know. I don't know. Signing out. So you guys can hear from that... Uh, from that voice clip there. I was pretty pissed off. Um, then I decided that the next recording I would do relating to Paladin's or the audio recording would be making fun of the patch notes and how they're gutting the healers to make Moji seem better than she actually is. Which is true, mind you. They gutted just about everyone. They even nerfed Grok, by the way. So, they're gutting 
the healer to try and make Moji meta, which isn't cool either. So let's go ahead and take a look at that clip. Okay, so I've been hearing a lot of the buzz around the Feudal Fables patch coming to Paladins here in like a week. At the time of me recording this, obviously. Uh, I'm once again in my car, as you guys can tell from the audio and from rain and shit hitting the roof. I gotta get something straight with the uh, high res here. You want to balance out healing because of the TTK. You think the TTK is too long? Are we gonna ignore the fact that Koga can kill most of the champs in the game without reloading? Just with his primary fire, not his abilities. Just his primary fire. He can kill most champs in the game without reloading. This includes some frontline champs base health. You're telling me that the TTK is too long? When we have Koga over here with some of the highest DPS in the game, and that's not factoring in his retardedly strong claws. I am like, excuse my French for that one, but his ridiculously strong claws that do over 600, almost 700 damage a swipe and pierce. And you mean to tell me the TTK is too long? And then get this, the Ray buffs or rework, whatever you want to label it as, they're only doing this so they have an excuse to nerf her and make her fucking unplayable. Do you guys not see what they're doing here? I call this the Rainbow Six Siege effect, where they make a character broken so they can come up with a reason to nerf them. They did this to Ella. Ella launched, I played, I started playing Siege way after Ella came out. But when Ella came out, she was incredibly broken. Then they nerfed her over and over and over and over and over again. To the point where we are today, where her guns do fuck all, her gadget does fuck all, and, uh, you know, the resistance to the concussions that she had, you know, because, um, duh, she uses the concussion mind. Yeah, they got rid of that. So everything that made Ella usable and good, they got rid of. That's kind of the same thing that's happening here with Paladins is they are going to make certain characters broken so they have an excuse to nerf them down to a certain level. They are going to put Rey down on the same level as Furia, Grok, and Genos. Explain that one to me. Yeah, they're nerfing how much healing she does with her chain heal, but they're reworking extension, right? They are reworking extension to give her a second charge. Meaning, if you if you put two and two together, she's doing 600, uh, 600 healing base, right? I think they're taking it to 550, which is not a huge difference, right? Factor in with extension, she's going to have two charges of chain heal. That is 1100 base healing in one burst. Make it make sense to me. Make it make sense, somebody. That is not cool, dude. I play Ray because I enjoy playing Ray. I don't play Ray because she's the try-hard healer to play. No, the the best healers in the game right now, arguably, are Ying and Corvus. Genos, his healing output is not good enough for him to be worth playing. Lilith is circumstantial. She's only good on some maps. Io, Io is good for the rest of her kit. Her healing is weaker than a lot of other supports. And this is coming from an Io main. I main Io. She is like my main. If I had to one trick a character, that would be the character I one trick. So, and don't don't worry. We're gonna get to the Io thing here in a minute. And the Lilith. Right, and Corvus, and Ying, 
we're gonna get to all this here in a little bit. So, they're making Moji a support. Moji is not going to have the most healing output. So what are they going to do? Are they going to change Moji's healing values to make her on par with the other supports? Or are they going to do the stupid thing and nerf the other supports to put them on par with Moji? Or are they going to buff Moji but leave everyone else as, as they were with the patch notes so Moji becomes the meta support? I have no problem with a new character becoming meta or with them reworking an old character and making them meta. My issue is making a character meta by ruining the game. By ruining, uh, by taking everything we know about the character and flipping it on its head. I'm going to most likely have to make another build for Io. I'm going to most likely have to start running lifelink. I don't want to run lifelink. Lifelink is for self-sustain, much like sacrifice. It's good if you're running a dual support comp. It is not good when you are solo support. When you are solo support IO, you should run God's Blessing for the damage reduction. They're going to nerf IO's healing. They're going to, uh, funny enough, funny enough, damage support is the play style that a lot of people do not like, including myself. I think that damage support is stupid. I think supports should have two heal talents, one damage talent. That means Ying should have a... That means they should rework resonance for Ying and, you know, instead of the clones just doing damage when they explode, they should heal near... They, they should heal nearby teammates, right? That's what I mean. Every support should have two strong healing options for their talents because their primary role is to heal. But, you know, they're gonna buff... So when Luna when Luna is first deployed, Luna, uh, Luna being Io's fox, right? Luna does extra damage for the first two shots and gets a stun when you hit somebody with Io's primary fire. Um, for the first enemy you hit within a certain time frame, Luna will actually chase down Bite and that's a stun. They're buffing the fir they're buffing the damage on the first two shots from Luna. They're reducing the cooldown for the stun. Do you know what this encourages? This encourages damage IO. Am I against it? No, not at all. I'm not against damage IO. Damage IO works. I, for one, can play a damn good damage IO. However, when it will be the main play style for IO, that is where I have an issue. Let's talk about Ying. From 800 healing to 700 with life exchange, you know, a talent that is already hard enough to learn and master and use. From 800 to 700 base, and they're taking her clones healing down too. I don't remember exactly what they're taking it down to, but they're also nerfing her clone healing. It's ridiculous. I don't know. I don't know if you guys are smoking meth or what. But you need to listen to what your community says and stop giving a certain YouTuber the Block Block 9000, okay? Because from what I've heard, said YouTuber is just an above average EV player. He's nothing special and very toxic in game, from what I have heard. This is allegedly, right? And I'm not dropping names here either. I'm not going to name drop who this is. Um, but this, uh, same person also said that solo support Saris was trash. Well, you can tell that to my 285,000 healing. Anyway, with, uh, that little mini rant out of the way. Why is Ying getting another nerf? I understand that she got the third clone. But when she got her third clone, they got rid of her true heal for her ultimate. I don't think there's actually a true heal in the game right now. I know Lilith's ultimate 
gives you um, gives you true heal 35% life rip. I do know that. However, I don't consider that as true heal because you're not healing them, they're healing themselves. See what I mean? Speaking of Lilith, they are they are taking everything that made Lilith unique and throwing it out the window. They are reducing her base HP. They are reducing her blood HP or her blood count. And if you don't know, blood is so when you see a Lilith's health bar, right? A very small sliver of that is blue. The rest of it is this red texture. That's her blood pool. That's how she casts her abilities. The only ability she can cast that does not require blood is her hex mark. They are making Lilith terrible. This patch will kill Lilith. And, um... Might I add, I'm not even a Lilith main. I am just decent with her. That's all. I am just a decent Lilith, and I've dropped 224k. It's not an easy thing to do. I've done it. Can I do it consistently? Probably not, because again, it's not easy. But they're going to make it a lot harder to be able to use Lilith. They're going to make her a throw pick. At least with the last patch, they made Sky somewhat decent. They, they balanced her out and made her usable and ranked. But now we have Lilith, who's going to be down in the Furia and like Genos Grok tier. I'd argue Grover's down there too. Um, all you Grover fanboys, uh, I just want you to know something. Once that match goes past 10 minutes, you're screwed. You have to win the match within the first like 10, maybe 12 minutes for Grover. Otherwise, your team is screwed because you will not be doing enough healing because of Cauterize. Um, speaking of Grover, I think he's actually getting buffed, which, weird how they're buffing his damage and not his healing. I understand they want to stop people, or they want to push people away from heal botting, but when we have characters like Koga, we kind of have to. Koga, Betty, Dredge, Bomb King, Fernando, Tyra. We kind of have to heal bot to keep our team alive. You know, that's why that's why most people don't call it support. They call it healer. Because your main job is to heal your team. I understand that they do other that the support champs do other things as well. But you have Lilith, right? Let's take Lilith. Whose entire kit. She has one mobility uh, she has one mobility key right one her primary fire yeah that's damage duh her ultimate gives her whole team life rip her swarm primarily is used to heal teammates her hex mark is almost always used to heal teammates we have supports designed around heal bonding. And yeah, I mean, there's Ceres who can go in this, who heals and can stun, right? Ceres has two stuns in her kit, her ultimate and her, um, her soul rend, or whatever the hell it's called. Yeah, fine and dandy, until you realize that there are speed hackers who play damage Ceres who stun lock your team, and then you lose in five minutes, in ranked. Until you realize there are speed hacking Domba players who do the same thing and just stunlock your team. Let's talk about Corvus. From 800 to I think 700, but they're buffing his pistol's damage, which I mean, cool, I guess. But again, you have a character whose main thing is heal the team. His L1 is to put a mark on your teammate so they can get some healing. Your L2 is to heal. R2 is your primary fire, and R1 is a teleport. Your ultimate does damage that scales with HP, which, fine. That's that's okay, I guess. Um, it should have some benefit to your team. It should heal your team, right? But I think I can let that slide because it scales off of max HP, not current HP. So, if you were to, I don't know, 
put that on a Yagaroth who was being silenced by a Torvald. Yeah, they die pretty quick. So, I can't really complain too much about the Corvus thing. It's going to be really annoying, but it's not going to make too huge of a difference compared to everything else we've talked about so far. And I just think it's really funny how they're talking about a balance pass, a support balance pass, right? Understand this. Making characters useless is not balancing them out. Making characters useless only encourages people to um, engage in play styles that the majority of us do not like. We don't like playing with nor against these people. Most people who we get put with, who go damage Saris, go 0 and 15. Most damage Saris's that we play against go 15 and 0. And uh, remember what I said about the uh, cheaters, right? Remember what I said about the cheaters? Yeah. And I'm not one to call somebody out for cheating because they're better than me either. And then just the community that's a that's a whole nother video i'm doing a i'm doing a remaster of that video that community rant for paladins oh stay tuned i'm doing a part two to that boys i'm doing a part two to that but this balancing is just if you want to balance the game i can tell you where you can start you can start by nerfing koga and talus that's where you can start I'll wait, I'll wait for someone to tell me why Koga is balanced and not overpowered. I will wait for someone to explain to me how Talus is not overpowered inherently because guess what? The the thing, the ultimate, right, that Tyra and Buck have, you know, the thing they have to either wait for or, you know, actually play the game for. Yeah, Talus gets a free ultimate. He gets a free Tyra ultimate every 12 seconds. And it's broken as shit because it does more damage than Tyra's ultimate. That's the crazy part. Talus does more damage than Tyra. So his ultimate is broken as shit. And y'all aren't gonna nerf that. He gets he gets the overcharge. And then he can just if he gets low, he can teleport away, get a thousand health back, come back and finish you off with a punch that does 600 damage. So Talus gets a, he gets a dash punch with a knockback. So he does what Andro does, but better. He does what Tyra does, but better. And then his teleporter, he does what Corvus does, but better. In his primary fire, he does what Sky does, but better. If you want to talk about balance patches, you can start by nerfing Talus. You can start by nerfing Koga. Take Adrenaline Junkie back to 160. The only people who complained about it being 160 were the people who are too scared to play anything but Koga. Were the one tricks. Those were the only people complaining. When y'all nerfed Adrenaline Junkie, I didn't care. You know why? I'm not a one trick. I can adapt. These one tricks out here cannot. So, with that being said, this balance patch doesn't seem very balanced to me. So, I'm out. Peace. <clears throat> and then the next clip is my response to getting the permanent ban on Paladins, which, mind you guys, mind you, as I say, or as I state, in one of the following clips, there's two clips left, um, as I state in one of them, I don't talk to Abby anymore, if y'all remember my Twitch streams, I used to play a lot with, um, with Abby, I don't talk to her anymore, I, we haven't spoken in months, we went our separate ways, we had a disagreement, yada yada yada, so we don't talk anymore, and she will even tell you, I don't really do anything ban worthy. Like, yeah, I can be an asshole sometimes, but that's usually when someone else is starting the fight. 
it's rarely when I start the fight. So yeah, I can be rude, I can be mean, but I don't do anything ban-worthy. Just about everyone I play with, uh, everyone I used to play with and still do play with can vouch for that. You know, I don't DC that, like, I don't DC very often, or I should say I didn't DC very often. So I didn't really do anything ban-worthy, I didn't throw game, even though there were times where I should've because someone on my team deserved it, I still didn't. And I still got a permanent ban, so let's go ahead and, uh, let's go ahead and play the reaction to that. Okay, you know what? I thought high res couldn't top the dumb shit they've already done. Well, guess what guys? I wake up this morning, right? After all the times that I've been called racial slurs, homophobic slurs, actually funny story. The other day I was called, and I quote, faggot ass white boy a number of times by the same person in one game. I was told to kill myself over 50 times on two separate occasions by the same person. Out of us three, out of me, the guy who is only toxic in response to toxicity and does not generally reach their level, out of us three, me and those two, who got banned? Who has a permanent fucking ban on their account? Me. I woke up and got on. I'm permanently fucking banned. What the fuck, hi res? I've sunk over $200 into Paladins because I like the fucking game. I'm trying to support you guys, even though I don't agree with everything you guys do. I at least try to support the developers because it's a good fucking game. I finally hit gold one last night. We're finally having a good time winning. I get off for the night. I go to bed. I wake up and I'm banned. I've played maybe one or two games without a stack in the last two, three days. And... That was the one game where the guy called me faggot ass white boy multiple times throughout the match. He was smurfing, which he admitted to, in the VC. That's against TOS. Why is he not banned? Why am I banned? Explain that one to me. And the best part is, anyone who knows me knows I ain't white either. That's the best part. So explain to me, hi -Rez. why the hell am I banned? I mean, this is fucking ridiculous. On a good day, on a good day, if I'm not with a four or five stack, on a good day, maybe three of the games we play are gonna have somebody throw. Maybe three. Which is once again against the TOS. They never get banned. I have sent you guys multiple video clips, made multiple videos on people throwing the game. And just like my two week ban, I still don't know why I was banned for two weeks, mind you. They never got back to me on that. I filed a fucking sport ticket before I came down here in my car to make this video. I filed a fucking support ticket. We're gonna see what they say. We're gonna see what they say that I did. And if they said some stupid shit, I'm appealing. Because it's, no, that's not cool. I'm gonna appeal regardless. But, I, it better not be over some stupid shit. Because you're telling me that getting a little bit toxic compared to a lot of toxic is gonna get me permanently fucking banned? What the hell, hi res? You mean, you mean to tell me that our Torvald last night, who after the first round gave up and sat AFK on the side of the map every round, and we still capped two points after that round? playing a 4v5 or rather a 4v6 because he was working against us you mean to tell me he won't get banned but i'm getting a permanent fucking ban but i'm one of y'all's biggest supporters it's ridiculous it is ridiculous i'm the i'm one of the few people who don't actively use a smurf account i have an alternate account and the only reason i use that alternate account is when i got banned for the two weeks because I didn't deserve that two week ban. I was never given a reason for why I was banned. Just like today, no fucking reason for why I'm banned. But I log on and it says I've been banned. My account has been banned. Not suspended for insert amount of time, no, banned. So I got a permanent ban for what? 
I just, I, I want to fucking know high res. Because it pisses me off that now that's over $200 down the fucking drain. And I was about to, I was about to get the event pass that's coming out. I'm not going to do that now. Y'all are going to be lucky if I even continue playing on my fucking alt account. Like, what the hell? High res hates their fucking community. They don't ban hackers. They don't ban people going around telling people to kill themselves. And keep in mind, I have this guy added, mind you. I have this guy added, who just, anytime he's losing, tells his teammates to kill themselves. So I have his gamer tag ready and available. Whenever you guys are whenever you guys are ready to take this shit seriously and actually ban people who deserve it, I have a gamer tag for you guys. Dude tells people to kill themselves because they either A, don't go to champ he wants, or B, don't do what he tells them to do. Which again is very against the TOS and is very fucking illegal in some places. So you're telling me that the guy who's generally chill and goes on and just kicks ass is permanently banned. Anyone who knows me, and, and this is if they try to say that I was quote cheating or hacking, anyone who knows me knows that I don't cheat or hack. Okay, that's one. Two, I'm on PlayStation, so I don't exactly have the means to hack. You can hack on PlayStation, yes, but am I going to? Fuck no, because it takes too much time. Do I cheat? No. I'm about, I'm about as legit as they come. And if this is over some stupid shit in the Discord, in the official Paladin's Discord yesterday, well, let me just, um, let me just put this out there for you guys, too. Um, I don't think I should get permanently banned because I told people to stop riding my dick because I played point tank Yagaroth, or because I used to, rather. I play off tank Yagaroth now, but I used to play point tank. And I had four or five people riding my ass about it. And when they realized that I'm better than them with Yagaroth and I know what I'm talking about, they shift the subject from Yago to my KD with supports, which is uh, pretty funny because uh, the KD on support does not matter. It doesn't mean shit. Why am I banned, hi Res? Hmm? You know, I was banned for two weeks in September last year for no reason. I am permanently banned now for no reason. Why? Why Why me? You know, I finally... It's like you guys don't want me to hit flat or some shit. Last, last split, gold won 99 out of 100, and then all of a sudden, I cannot get a single good team. This split, I learned my fucking lesson and stopped queuing solo. I don't understand what y'all's problem is. It's like you don't want your community to play your game. How are people going to be excited? This has been pretty much confirmed. How are people going to be excited for a Paladins 2? When you can't even properly run Paladins 1. I mean, holy shit, are you guys that salty that I called you out for making stupid decisions that you're gonna ban me and make up some reason? Is that what this is? Is it because I said you shouldn't have banned Koga and you shouldn't have nerfed, or you shouldn't have buffed Koga and nerfed Sky? Is, is that why? Is that why High Res? Because I said Koga didn't need the buff and Sky didn't need the nerf and Willow didn't need the buff. Is that why? I'm 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 asking a serious fucking question here. Is that why I'm banned? This shit is ridiculous, and it's at the point now where even if my appeal gets accepted, I might stop playing the game. I deadass might stop playing the game, because I know you're not getting another fucking dime out of me. That's for damn sure, high res You're not getting another cent out of me. Not even a fucking nickel. Not happening. I wouldn't give your ass money if you were fucking homeless under a bridge after that. I'm permanently banned when, quite literally, just the other day, I was called racial slurs. Bravo, high res. The real heroes out here. The real heroes out here. Let's ban a victim. Let's let's ban someone who gets harassed every time they solo queue. And we're not going to ban the people that harass them. What about the times where I was solo queuing? Right where I was streaming, mind you. Back when I used to stream on Twitch all the time. When I was streaming and I had 
upwards of three, four people at a time fucking harassing me for an entire match. Why aren't they banned high res? Hmm? This was live, by the way. This was live. I used to stream Paladins a lot last year. This was live. None of them are banned. I'm banned. Me. You know what this says to me, high res? Okay? This says to me that even if my appeal gets accepted, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna fucking play the game anymore. I don't wanna risk getting permanently banned for nothing. For actually nothing. I'm not trying to, I'm not giving you guys more money. I've already given y'all over 200 bucks on skins and shit. Cause again, I try to support the developers, it's a game I like. I'm not gonna play it at this point. Like, I barely play it outside of a stack. When I'm not stacking, I'm playing something else. When my stack gets on, I get on. It's as simple as that. And I'm not gonna say names. I'm not going to throw anyone under the bus. We all make, everyone likes, everyone makes offensive jokes. Everybody, everybody makes offensive edgy humor. Well, I'm not the one who makes racist jokes in text chat. Like, out of everyone I play with, I'm not the one to make racist jokes in text chat. Nor in voice chat, usually. But yet, I'm the one that got banned. And I'm not saying they should get banned either. No, they shouldn't. But you cannot sit here and tell me that I should be permanently banned when the only instances of toxicity you can fucking find are when I am responding to somebody else. Very rarely do I initiate it. And when I quote initiate it, it's because we're in drafting phase and I'm like, hey, we need a second tank. Not nah, me, I'll go Victor. Because they're a fucking dumbass. It's just, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. The amount of times, and then let's, let's point this out. The only, the only thing I can think that I got banned for with that two week ban is for calling a willow an inbred. But, but, here's the best part. Here's the best part, everyone. I may have called that willow an inbred, but they called me a retard 15 times before I called them an inbred. They were not banned and I was. That is the only thing I can think of that got me banned for that two week ban. And now I'm permanently banned and I have no explanation. I was not told why I was permanently banned. So bravo high res, bravo. You, you're not getting any more of my fucking money. Okay. Um the follow-up video is going to have that fourth clip um, so I'll just give context to it in the follow-up video but for the outro here if you stayed around for this whole video thank you I do appreciate it um, a like or a subscription would it help me out I'd appreciate it um, I really don't know what to say here just I'm disappointed with high res after all the after all the things I put up with, you know, and I still supported them, I shouldn't have been treated like that. They should have at least given me a reason on day one of the suspension, instead of making me wait almost a week to get a response. So, again, I have a feeling, I just, I have a feeling they banned me for no reason went back through chat logs to find anything they could have used to ban me for and used that as their example. Now, why do I say this? The example I was given for why I was banned was dated back to, I want to say close to two weeks. So they were just, they were grasping at straws looking at my chat logs trying to find something to ban me for. And my hypothesis is because I pissed off someone in the Discord server who was apparently who could have been a friend of the developers or something. I don't know. Um, but just wait until just just wait until you see the follow up because Share Factory has a limit and I can't exactly go much farther than this. So I will catch y'all in the follow up video. So see you soon.